So speaking of autonomy, we've got a Elon tweet that just dropped. One day it'll drive itself right to your house. And Elon says this year. So you order a new Tesla with your phone and the car literally just drives itself to your house. <laughs> Even if they don't introduce any new models, I would still be invested in the company because autonomy is the play. And we've done the math on how disruptive this is, how massive the market is, and the huge cost advantage that Tesla has. Mm -hmm. This idea of I order a Tesla and it just goes to my house. Imagine the TikToks of people doing that and just blow, like, like literally this car pulls into your driveway. You're like, what? <laughs> so few people know about FSD right now. You and I have been talking a lot about this year. You and I are following this super closely. We've got the latest version of it. We see how good it is. We know that it finally mm. is the real deal. It has not been for a long time. Now it actually is. Is this what it's going to take to get the broader population aware of what's going on? What's it going to take? I think it'd help if Elon only did interviews from a self-driving Tesla. You could have Elon and Joe Rogan or Elon and Trump in a self-driving Tesla. I think that would help. About a million people or so know how good version 13 of Tesla self-driving is. We may have gotten a peak of a rebrand of full self-driving to Tesla self-driving which was showing on the screen for the Tesla driving itself from the factory down through the tunnel in Texas, the outbound lot said Tesla self-driving on it. I think we need some kind of, maybe Elon would get more into advertising once self-driving was going, but I'm not sure how much the robotaxi rollout in Austin is going to go viral because it may only be with Tesla employees for a while. So you can't just fly down there or be some random dude in Austin and grab one of these. They might do an event where they give you access, but otherwise it may not be allowed. Maybe that's what the whole FSD new early access is about, giving some people the ability to ride in something that's driverless at an event. Yeah, it's shocking to me that more people don't know about this because it is so exciting, I think. But even a lot of casual Tesla owners are just like, oh yeah, it works pretty well. Or they haven't tried it in a year. And they're like, yeah, I've got a free trial, but I haven't tried it. So I don't know, I'm just, I'm like shocked that it hasn't broke through into the zeitgeist more broadly. But I, my sense is it's only a matter of time because it's going to be so impactful, not only to Tesla's financials, but to society and the overall user experience. I'm coming down to Indiana next week and I'll be self-driving the whole way, which will be great. But if I could actually be on my computer doing some work, <laughs> that would completely change my day in a very meaningful way and free up a lot of my time, which is very valuable. I think this is such a big deal and we're so close to it. It's just fun to have a front row seat and watch this. Anyone who has not tried it, who's watching us right now, I strongly encourage you go check out, do a test drive of the latest version of full self-driving. On hardware four vehicle. On hardware four, definitely. What else do we have on our docket? Any other new vehicles? Do you think we have a new vehicle <laughs> this year that's being launched in addition to these new variants that we're hearing about? I'm confident that it's not going to be the Robovan. There were Tesla engineers at the We Robot event that were talking about saying, oh, this is just a prototype. I think the Robovan comes later after successful RoboTaxi launch. It'll be a way where a lot of people going on the same route can share one ride. And then once they get to the end of the route, there'll be a bunch of individual robo taxis for them to hop on to. I think that the Robovan will come later. I'm hopeful that there'll be a compact, but I almost feel like it's less than 50, 50. And I do think it'll be bearish for the stock if we don't get a compact this quarter or this year. Yeah. It's a weird situation. So I feel like we've got a decent amount of negative things going on right now with the stock, with the company's fundamentals in the very short term. At mm -hmm. the same time, we are literally like two months away from <laughs> an absolutely massive milestone in the history of the, of the company. So I don't know how to balance those things. Maybe we just accept some short-term volatility so that we don't miss the upside that we believe will be there. Not investment advice. I, I feel like it's one of the rare times I feel like I've got no clue what's coming in the next month, just because you've got such a mix of negatives and positives all together. We're not talking about this to FUD people. This is legitimately what's on our minds. We believe in Tesla long-term and we love the self-driving product. 
I really enjoy self-driving. So <laughs> there are times where I have my weeklies with Randy. I might get to the office early and it's so early. I'll just extend the route. So I go further and do some more self-driving. The other day I was 15 minutes early to something else and I added more to my route. It's yeah, really I mean, enjoyable. Yeah, so I agree with you on that. It's super enjoyable, but now I think I trust it more than I trust myself, which is a weird state to admit. Yeah. I mean, I had this situation the other day, trying to rush back because we had our trading on Tuesday. I had to leave in the middle of the day and then rush back. So I was turning left and I was like, I'll drive because I'll be a little faster than FSD will be. And so I just, I looked both ways and started to pull out. And then I realized that the guy who was coming this way had actually turned into the left turn lane. He was going to turn right into my way. So I had to hit the brakes hard. I was like, all right, well, I'll just let FSD drive from now on. It's always watching. It doesn't look this way, then look that way. And then uh -huh. go. I've had enough of those situations where I'm slightly embarrassed at my driving. Yeah. Nothing super bad or anything like that. But FSD just doesn't make those mistakes anymore. And I occasionally still do. It's humbling, but it's also really exciting for humanity because so many people die from this. Of course, we love it for the investing standpoint, but also this is, I firmly believe as a human being, this is just an incredibly great thing for society. Yeah. Think of how many lives seatbelts have saved. This is going to be a multiple of that. I think it's going to be a much better world for our children to grow up in a world that has cars that are always watching and driving, not making the same dumb mistakes that we do, mm -hmm. or God forbid, drunk drivers or people who are really distracted. For me, I'm also finding that I am making more potentially dangerous mistakes than FSD is making. And when this happens, it is embarrassing. <laughs> I, I agree with that. You admit that you were wrong and FSD was right, Bradford. <laughs> yes. Yes, I will. <laughs> the other thing is if you're just supervising FSD and being hyper vigilant, it's easy to be hyper critical because you're able to scan more of the scene and pay attention to more compared to when you're driving. This is the insight that Matt and I have gained from driving it versus letting it drive for us. We've discovered yeah. that it is now making better decisions. It's your point. If you're hyper vigilant and just waiting for it to make a mistake, you're being like a backseat driver. <laughs> and then, why did it do that little thing? And I've noticed myself doing that every once in a while. It's being a little weird right here. And I noticed there's a person I didn't see hiding behind a car, basically waiting for me to pass. <laughs> I didn't see that person. And even when I'm criticizing it, sometimes I'm wrong. One of the things I've noticed recently is it's extremely good at avoiding squirrels now. It used to definitely slow down for dogs and sometimes mm -hmm. for squirrels. Now, every single time a squirrel runs out, it'll either slow down or it'll like turn out of the way a little bit. So it's just getting so much more smooth and natural and the mistakes it's making are stylistic mistakes. Yeah. So it's hard to even call them mistakes because it's just, it's doing things slightly different than I would. Whereas the mistakes I notice with myself are more dangerous. I'm Bradford Ferguson. He is Matt Smith. We are with rebellionaire.com. And with that, I'm going to say bye for now. Bye for now.